everybody, welcome back to Zoo School. My name is Andrea, I'm one of the educators here at the zoo and we're excited to be spending another afternoon with you. Uh, so today we wanted to talk about something that people that work with animals actually have to think about and that is overcoming fears. Believe it or not, there are uh, sometimes animals that we may be a little bit nervous to be around and that's something that we have to get used to and overcome. So today I wanted to introduce you to one of my friends, Edwin the Red-Tailed Boa. Um, as snakes are sometimes uh, an animal that people can be a little bit nervous about or a little bit fearful about. Um, but I wanted to share him with you today so we can talk about some of the misconceptions. And if you're one of those people that are a little bit nervous about snakes, this is a great opportunity to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, so we're going to give Edwin some climb time this afternoon. Uh, so he's hanging out on a branch, um, getting some what we call enrichment. Um, and just a little background on Edwin, he again is a red-tailed boa. He's about seven years old and he's been with us here at the zoo for about uh, two years. Uh, and I find a lot of people um, that are a little bit nervous or maybe fearful of snakes, a lot of times it has to do with because they actually look so much different than us and sometimes we are unsure about things that look different or move differently or things that we just don't understand. But sometimes when we learn a little bit more about them, we know that they can still be safe and they're really um, interesting animals to, uh, to be around. So one of the things you might first notice is Edwin's covering is a lot different than ours. So Edwin is covered in what we call scales and he's a type of reptile. Um, so I have actually to show you guys some snake shed uh, so you can kind of get an up close idea of what those scales look like. So as snakes grow, they actually shed their skin and it looks like this. This is actually from our anaconda in the rainforest exhibit um, that shed a couple months ago. And what's really cool, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, uh, snakes shed everything and even um, they have a scale over their eyelid where my finger is right there. So that actually sheds off as well. So when snakes are sleeping, you actually don't know they're sleeping because they have a clear eyelid over that. So when I had to go get Edwin this morning, um, I had to wake him up. So I usually go in and I give him a little pat just so he knows I'm there and then you'll see some movement. Usually I have to wake him up. You might have seen his tongue flicker there too. So snakes um, have a really cool adaptation. They actually smell with their tongue. Um, so you might see him flick his tongue out um, and it's forked, it goes in two different directions. Uh, and they use that mainly to find food. So what do you think uh, snakes might like to eat? You can actually leave it in the comments or you can pause the video and talk to your family about what you think. But snakes love to eat meat, they're carnivores. Uh, so here at the zoo, Edwin gets a rat, um, usually about once every other week because that's all they need to eat, um, which is pretty typical in the wild too. And we get them in frozen, our zookeepers defrost them and then feed them out to our snakes. Uh, and when snakes eat, it's really cool because if you notice, they have a really small mouth, um, but they can actually eat something that's as big as the widest part of their body. So right about there. So Edwin can eat a rat about that wide. And what happens is their jaw can actually uh, stretch. So our jaw can kind of go up and down. Theirs kind of stretches out and up. If we could do that, we could actually swallow a basketball or a watermelon, which is amazing. Um, so they're able to swallow the whole thing and then their body digests everything, the bones, the fur, or the feathers. Um, so it could take, take them a couple days to digest their food. And one of the reasons they only need to eat once every other week is that they're actually cold blooded or what we call in science, um, ectothermic, uh, which means they can't regulate their body temperature like we can. So sometimes you'll see them out basking in the sun um, or relaxing in a place that's nice and warm to warm up their body. Um, so because of that, they're really efficient with their energy. So they only have to eat every once in a while, which is pretty cool. Edwin's going to eat later today, actually, and then he'll be good for another week and a half to two weeks. Uh, so. I'm sure there are a lot of things that you could be fearful of too, but we encourage you today to think about what are some of those fears that you have and maybe some things you and your family can do to help overcome those fears. For example, I am terrified of heights. Um, so maybe you could draw a picture or tell us about what you're afraid of and what you might be doing to help overcome those fears. And you can put those in the comments to share with us so that we can help cheer you on and support you.
And before we go today, I forgot I had one more thing I wanted to show you. Uh, one of the other things that uh, people are um, maybe sometimes not aware of is snakes actually have bones, just like we do. So because of the way they move, it sometimes looks like they're, they have no bones, but they are vertebrates, just like we are. So this is an example of a snake skeleton. They have lots and lots of ribs. You can see all the way down. So that's one thing that actually is, uh, that we have in common with snakes. And Edwin here is non-venomous. So there are venomous snakes and non-venomous snakes. Um, here in Rhode Island, we don't have any venomous snakes, so you don't have to worry. But even in other parts of the world where there are venomous snakes, uh, people live around them all the time without any issue. Um, as long as we respect their space, they're going to respect our space. So again, anytime you're out observing, just make sure you observe from a distance. And snakes are really important to our ecosystem. We want them around because they help control uh, pest populations and rodent populations like mice and rats. So they're really important to our ecosystem and we wanna do our best to, uh, to keep them around and care for them. So I hope today you learned a little bit more about snakes and maybe got a little bit more comfortable and stepped out of your comfort zone. And next time you're at the zoo, maybe you'll get to meet a snake like Edwin. Um, you can always check out our anaconda exhibit in our Faces of the Rainforest too. Well, thank you so much for joining us for another Zoo School segment today and we hope to see you again um, next time. Thanks so much.